Franca for the introduction. Um, today's lessons uh, will be about JavaScript and two let's call teachers of uh, JavaScript, which are Ajax and jQuery. Uh, I want to start with this slide because it's uh, the one you saw in the first lecture of the course introduction. This was uh, the architecture of your website. And as you can see now in the front end part, uh, we are dealing with uh, the left part of this diagram. And we have seen that uh, the most important topic to cover are Bootstrap, HTML, CSS, and the part that we are going to address today, the part of JavaScript, jQuery, and Ajax. Um, the agenda seems to be uh, really short, but it's not the case because there are lots of contents uh, behind this uh, concept and behind these features. Uh, before starting with um, JavaScript, uh, Ajax, and jQuery, I just want to uh, recap some basic concepts that you have seen during uh, the last lecture. Uh, first is HTML. Um, which is the hypertext markup. There is background noise. Can you do something to improve the audio? What kind of noise do you hear? I I don't know what can maybe. I think it's your PC fan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but in this case, uh, I can close brackets because I had some examples to show you, but we can do in runtime maybe. Now, uh, I don't think it's better now, it could be. Shall I continue? And maybe this problem will, uh, will fix. Okay, guys. OK, thank you. Um, so as I was saying, the first um, concept I want to uh, collect is uh, the HTML, uh, which is the language that allows us to struct our page. Um, I, I use a skeleton, in fact, here because HTML just put the element inside the HTML page. Then what we can do is to add style. So the other concept uh, is the CSS, um, what we add to our page to, uh, for example, color the background uh, or, uh, for example, add animation. And um, I show you now the, uh, the way you declare. Um, the usually declaration are made of property value pair. And you can uh, collect, you can select an element of your HTML page and add in the declaration block as many property value pair as you want. The third concept uh, that is very important uh, uh, is the browser. Uh, the browser, uh, as you know, has two functionalities. Uh, it has to load the HTML and CSS context and as to render the, the content uh, that he retrieved. In fact, uh, here in this diagram, uh, it's uh, clear, uh, load the HTML, parse the HTML, and uh, instead with the parse of the HTML, he read also the, um, the CSS, parse the CSS and create the DOM. The DOM is the uh, virtual representation uh, of the HTML page and style. And the, the image here shows you how the, we can see the DOM uh, inside our the, the development the development tool of our browser. So this uh, this was the three main concepts um, that I uh, recap because they are important and they are connected with JavaScript. Um, JavaScript, uh, in fact, is the programming language of uh, used uh, together with HTML and for the web. It's a scripting language uh, and allows you to create interactive web pages. 
and it follows the rules of client-side programming, so it runs inside a browser. And But nowadays, JavaScript is so spread that it's used also for the backend logic, uh, for example, in Node.js. This is um, a, a slide just to uh, talk about the history of JavaScript. Um, JavaScript was born uh, uh, at the beginning of 90s when also uh, the web and internet uh, were already born and it has been uh, it was a scripting language developed by Brendan H in just 10 days. Uh, Brendan H is, was working for uh, Netscape uh, during that time Netscape uh, and uh, Internet Explorer were the um, the two strengths of the of the internet that time and um, after 10 days uh, in Netscape uh, Brandon Ake developed LiveScript that was a uh, descriptive language that allows the browser to receive input from the user and to produce output according to these inputs but uh, in the same time uh, in the 90s there was also Java uh, which was born and uh, it was uh, getting famous. And so uh, at Netscape, the, uh, they had the idea to change the name LiveScript in something that was more catchy and they, and they changed the name in JavaScript. And this, uh, this was uh, the, the reason why um, there was lots of mess uh, for this uh, choice of names because Java and JavaScript seems that are two related things, but this is not the case. Uh, Java doesn't uh, deal with JavaScript. They are um, completely different languages and they can have some uh, uh, common purpose, but uh, mainly they are used for different different um, different kind of applications and also the way you program in Java or in JavaScript is completely different. So uh, I don't want to bother you with the difference between Java and JavaScript. I just uh, put in these slides uh, the main one. And these are the application uh, that uh, we can have with JavaScript. We can code dynamics, dynamic single page applications. We can use front end technologies. It's used in front end technologies, like for example, jQuery, React.js, AngularJS. It's uh, lots of uh, server side technologies, like for example, Node, Express, but also MongoDB are based on JavaScript. And it's also used in the mobile app development. This is, uh, these are the other competitors. Uh, I think that nowadays JavaScript uh, doesn't have so many competitors, uh, but during the first year of 2000, uh, there were lots of alternatives, like for example, uh, Adobe Flash or uh, the applets Java, uh, but um, I think that the Adobe Flash was the the enemy number one of JavaScript, but nowadays it's deprecated. These are um, the development tool we are going to use in order to uh, use uh, JavaScript. JavaScript. Uh, we have the editor and we know that um, we, we can use I mean, any editor we want. Uh, nowadays, there are editors that highlight syntax and allows us to write uh, code in an efficient way. Then the code has to be interpreted uh, or compiled, and we need a JavaScript engine. Let's say uh, nowadays, uh, most of the editors uh, embed, uh, uh, like for example, uh, uh, brackets or uh, um, Visual Studio Code also in, uh, as a, a JavaScript engine uh, inside, or we can use also the console of the of our browser. And uh, and we need also a debugger because when we code, uh, we need a debugger to understand where is uh, where are the problems in our code. 
JS, as we had seen, is very, very uh, spread. Uh, it's very, very used, but uh, the best, uh, let's say, uh, place where to put our JavaScript code, uh, uh, it's an HTML page, is uh, our browser is uh, use JavaScript to uh, code a website or a web page. And there are three ways to add uh, JavaScript uh, in uh, the HTML. Can you write the names of the editor and the debugger? Okay. Um, for what concerns the editor, the editor are uh, the, the ones I, I, I put in this slide are Sublime Text, which is just a text editor, uh, but it has a lots of plugins and it's open source. The second one is uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, I think that uh, most of you know Visual Studio Code. I think that it's the best choice. Uh, then for a Windows user, there is Notepad. And another tool I like uh, when I usually code front end, uh, it's brackets, which is the last one. Because brackets uh, allows you to, uh, it has a live preview tool that uh, open um, the page you are working, uh, working on uh, directly on, uh, on the browser. And for what concerns the debugger, the debugger has the same concept as the interpreter, so it's embedded uh, in the editor you are using, uh, or you can use the, uh, the, the browser one. Uh, so uh, we were saying that there are three uh, way to three ways to um, integrate uh, our JavaScript code inside an HTML page. The first uh, it's to use inline code, and this is for example uh, in the first example uh, is shown uh, uh, how you can do uh, in uh, in general, and in the second example with this. Um, with this tag, uh, it's a specific application. In case you have an, um, a link, uh, you can use in the href uh, the description uh, Java, the attribute JavaScript, uh, colon alert, and insert JavaScript code in this way, but this is just the case of links. Uh, for uh, any other kind of uh, element, HTML element, this is the notation in line for uh, insert in Java inline uh, JavaScript code. So we call an event on click, and what uh, we are doing here is to open up pop up window and say hello when we click on this button. Of course, the line code uh, it's co uh, it's very comfortable uh, if we add just to open a pop-up window. But if we have a big project, we uh, it's uh, then hard to manage if we write uh, our script uh, inside uh, the HTML element. Another option could be use this kind of blocks. Uh, you, we enter inside that tag script all the JavaScript code that we we are going to use, but also this it's uh, um, less uh, scalable when we are going to uh, work in a very 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 big project. The best option, uh, in my opinion, is to use external JavaScript. So to um, write our JavaScript code on a separate um, on a separate part, and then uh, uh, save this document and import this document using uh, the same tag as before, but uh, with the attribute source. And the attribute can be, we, we can have our JavaScript file uh, in local uh, or uh, somewhere in, uh, in a server. So this was uh, how we can use JavaScript. Um, I would like to uh, show you an example. Um, I, I would like, let's see if it's my computer uh, doesn't explode. Okay. You continue uh, see my, my window. 
Okay, so this is a very uh, rough HTML page I prepared yesterday. And as you can see, uh, I click on this button and nothing happened because this is just a page with HTML and CSS where I add some uh, some elements. Uh, then another, I prepared another page with, let's see, uh, with a JavaScript button. I added uh, the, the command before, and this is an alert that opens, so I add inline uh, JavaScript code, this is, on click uh, alert, what is happening there? And I prepared another example for you that shows all the three ways you can uh, import JavaScript. This is inline, this is when it's tagged, and this is from an external JavaScript file. And we can see in the in this uh, HTML page, maybe I can jump a little bit, zoom a little bit, okay. This is the inline, this is the target, and here the script, and this is the external. Now we will see better each part of the um, that I used in this JavaScript code, but this was just an example to show you how it's easy to start uh, using the, the complete pack. So HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So now I prepared something uh, which is um, not so devoted to DOM manipulation uh, and HTML, but they are really the basics of JavaScript. So uh, for the one of you that didn't know JavaScript, uh, this could be useful. Um, I highlighted some features as some really tricky aspects of JavaScript. Uh, the first one, for example, and in JavaScript, uh, usually when you code every statement that you that you write must and with a semicolon. This is not the case of JavaScript. Uh, in JavaScript, you can uh, write these two declarations and these two declarations are equal, produce the same results. But uh, when then we use a minifier, for example, uh, that is the tool uh, that usually compress your code and uh, delete all the white spaces, for example, uh, this could be uh, this could be a problem because if you don't use semicolon, uh, then the JavaScript engine doesn't recognize that the instruction has ended and the other is starting. So best practice always use semicolon, but in case you forget a semicolon, JavaScript will not prompt you an error. Other um, feature is that JavaScript uh, is case sensitive. So write my variable uh, in the way, uh, in these two ways is different for JavaScript. So if I uh, use the first my variable and the second my variable, I'm creating two different variables. So other thing, uh, you have to be careful when you assign a name to a variable and uh, another thing is to use always the same uh, convention. So uh, if you write camel case, uh, uh, write camel case. Uh, if you write uh, using uh, dash, the, the minus, uh, write variables using the minus, but don't mess up with uh, different convention, uh, different ways of calls, of calling variables. Of course, there are also the possibility to use comments inside the inside your code. Uh, comments are single line or uh, multi-line. Single line comments can be put also on the same line uh, uh, of your statement. And while uh, 
this is for uh, what the concern the multi-line comments of course you can use these two um, symbols inside the comments otherwise use you, you are stopping the multi-line comments and you're starting another one types of data uh, data in JavaScript uh, are mainly uh, the primitive one of, are mainly five numbers, strings, boolean, uh, objects, and uh, the, um, the undefined uh, state of um, an object. We have this distinction, we have these uh, five primitive data types, but in JavaScript uh, everything is an object. So uh, also uh, a number, also a string, also a boolean as a prototype represented by an object. And this is very useful because uh, all, uh, JavaScript objects uh, share some methods and some properties. So uh, in this way, we know that um, all the um, all the objects uh, sharing some properties uh, it's it's useful to uh, code uh, knowing this because for example uh, uh, there is uh, the um, two string method that allows you to convert every object in a string there is another method that we will see which is the value of that gives you the value of uh, an object doesn't uh, in, independently from this object is a number or is a string and as I was saying before, um, also even e uh, each primitive uh, object is then uh, uh, translated in an object and we can call a method on this object. Like for example, uh, I want to uh, transform Andrea uh, and write Andrea all in uh, caps lock. So I'm using the dot notation to call a method of string uh, which is to uppercase. Another feature of JavaScript is the weak typing. Uh, weak typing uh, means that uh, JavaScript is a dynamic typing language. We can declare uh, our variable, for example, my var, and don't assign any value to this variable. So the variable uh, will be created as undefined. And then we can uh, uh, change uh, every time we want the value of our variable. So in the first case is a uh, will be a number. Uh, in the second case null. Third case uh, a string, and in the last case a boolean. And of course, also with weak typing, we have to be uh, really, really, really careful because. Uh, this property is, uh, gives us lots of possibilities, but we have also to be careful because uh, if, we are, uh, if we use a variable which is a string and then for some reason we change the type of this string in a number, then uh, on the number we cannot call some methods that belongs to string. So it's, uh, it's important not to confuse the, the type of a variable, and it's also a good practice to define it. Also, if JavaScript give us the possibility to uh, be uh, less strict, but in my opinion, it's important to always define the uh, type of a variable. For the name of a variable, uh, we saw that it's JavaScript is case sensitive. Uh, it's case sensitive not only for variables, but also with uh, for um, for for example the name of functions. These are some criteria uh, for uh, the name of a variable. Uh, it must not coincide with the one of the keywords of the language. For for example, we cannot use uh, if as a name of a variable. Uh, it cannot start with a number. Uh, or it cannot contain uh, it cannot contain special characters and uh, by the way are allowed uh, for example the underscore and the dollar sign the dollar sign is really 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 important in javascript and we will see then uh, the the reason another 
important feature of JavaScript is that you cannot declare your variable. Um, usually, when we code, we at the beginning we we write our block of uh, declaration in which we put all the variables that we are going to use in our code. But this is not the case of JavaScript. In fact, in JavaScript, uh, you can use a variable and define the variable uh, while you are using it. And it's very uh, comfortable uh, while you are coding, but then could be a um, source of bugs because uh, not declaring a variable uh, expi explicitly um, after few months that you, for example, uh, uh, wrote your code or uh, when you give your code to another person, uh, it's not so clear what you have written. Uh, an option introduced for in the ECMA script uh, uh, fifth version is the strict mode. Uh, the ECMA script standard is the standard that JavaScript is following. It's kind of uh, laws that JavaScript has to follow. Um, it is not good to declare a variable via let. We will see this uh, after. Uh, I had a slide on the, the let, uh, so we will see then uh, uh, what, uh, what are the advantages that using the let brings to us. Um, so in, uh, in this case, let's remain that uh, what we are using to identify a variable is the var. Uh, prefix and uh, starting with the sixth version of the ECMAScript standard, we have also another keyword uh, which is const and const uh, allows us to define constant and this uh, was something that before the sixth version uh, was not allowed and there were some convention uh, used for uh, from uh, developer, for example, uh, writes the name of the variable uh, all in caps lock uh, in order to uh, distinguish them uh, from the, the normal one. Now, from the sixth version, uh, we have the const keyword, so we can define, for example, the uh, pgrego constant uh, as using const. JavaScript allows us to use expressions uh, and we can use uh, practically all the operators that we usually use in uh, other programming language. We have arithmetic, relational, bitwise. Uh, we can also uh, write if statements uh, with, let's say, inline notation. So condition, question mark, so first uh, first value, otherwise second value. We can also use complex operators and uh, there is also the possibility to use string operator. As any other programming language, there are also the array. Um, array uh, are very flexible in JavaScript. Uh, for example, you can uh, create an array using this uh, destructuring assignment. So uh, var name of the variables and then the na uh, name of the elements inside the array and then the name of the variables. Um, in JavaScript, you can define a multi-dimension array, so matrix. Uh, you can define mixed array, uh, so array where the first element uh, is uh, the first element is a number, the second element is a string, and the third element is an array with inside strings and numbers. So, are very flexible. Then we have a control statement and uh, everything we need to loop and to iterate on uh, a given element. Uh, for what concern uh, statement, we have the if, the if else, uh, we have cascading if statements, so uh, if, else, else, if, else, if, else, if. Um, we can use a switch case. Uh, we have while and do while loops and the for loops. 
Um, I didn't uh, put any example here because they are uh, pretty uh, much standard in any programming language. Uh, just one thing that is cool in JavaScript uh, is the for in and for off loop. So there are two ways of uh, write um, this kind of loop uh, in a um, in few uh, words, in few lines of code, let's say. You don't have to declare a variable and increment this variable and pass all the array, but if you have, uh, for example, this array quantity, you can refer to indexing quantity and do something. This, uh, this is uh, one of the coolest uh, aspects of JavaScript. Important is uh, when we uh, create a function uh, is the scope of the variable we are going to use. The scope of the variable is the visibility that a variable has uh, when we declare it uh, and in the code we are, we are using it. So uh, if we have, for example, a local variable, the variable will be seen by all the function but not externally. Uh, um, a variable which has a global scope uh, will be seen, uh, for example, uh, here the x is a global one, z is a local one. So I cannot access z outside the function increment. Uh, I can access x inside this function, but I have to be careful because I can also redefine this function. And so uh, the, the scope of this function change, uh, the scope of this variable change. Let's analyze uh, each case. This is uh, really simple. Uh, I had a variable which is here uh, with a local scope. And uh, uh, here suppose that x is a, a global variable, as in the second example. So we have that the value here of x is 15. And then uh, when we when we call increment the values of x is 15, and then we have that our y is 16. Now what's uh, happening here is that I'm defining a variable called s, and I'm going to assign uh, to s the variable of x. Then I declare x as uh, uh, and assign the value of 5 and then I uh, write that x is equal to x plus s. Now uh, this assignment here uh, doesn't refer to the this value of x but when we create um, when we declare a variable inside a function, we are creating a new scope from this variable. And so this s here, when uh, we assign the x value, we are not assigning the global one, but the local one, which is uh, overwriting the global one. SC, and since uh, here I didn't uh, create any x, the value of s is undefined. Uh, this is the reason why also when I declare x equal to 5, the value is undefined, and here is none because uh, 5 plus undefined, it's equal to none. And another important aspect is that if I declare a variable inside a code block, not inside a function, but inside a code block, I'm not creating a new scope for the variable. The variable uh, will be seen uh, in all the function body. This is another really important aspect. And uh, this, uh, in this case, enter the uh, question that Gianmarco uh, asked before. Um, why we are not using let? We are going to use let when we want that the scope of our function uh, uh, starts and ends in a code block. So if we, in case of a for loop, for example, uh, it's uh, really used, uh, or in case you need a variable, uh, uh, let's say, um, 
throw an uh, use and throw uh, un, uh, in, in Italian we would say uh, una variabile usa getta. Uh, you can define uh, this the, this variable, but then its uh, it, its scope is limited to the to the code block uh, where we define it. I hope now it's clear, uh, Gianmarco, the part on the declaring a variable using let. Okay. So um, I, I would not suggest to you to use the let to declare any variable you want. Uh, I would use var for, uh, for a variable, const for a constant. And in case you have, for example, um, a variable you are going to use just for a loop, or just to uh, evaluate a condition, maybe you can use the let. Another important feature of uh, JavaScript is the uh, object, the part related to object. We can create uh, an object and the object are a special structure that allows us to define uh, uh, data, to, uh, um, that is uh, properties uh, represented by uh, key values pair and also uh, functionalities, methods represented by function. In this case, uh, I, I define, uh, this is called uh, the liter liter literally representation of an object. Uh, and it's uh, like writing a JSON, uh, a JSON object. You define the name uh, and what, which is the name. So this is the key, this is the value. And this is, for example, the function that returns the, the name, uh, uh, returns the string Mario Rossi. And we can access to uh, an object property using, for example, the dot notation and name uh, would be person.name, while for example, if you are going to call a functionality of an object, we are going to use person.name of the, the method. The example before uh, uh, printed just the name uh, Mario Rossi, the string Mario Rossi. But in case our object uh, is going to change uh, and uh, we don't want that the printed uh, result would be always Mario Rossi, but we want to refer to some property of the object, uh, to the object uh, itself. And this is the reason why uh, we can use the this uh, prefix and it's and using this we are referring to the instance of the object so uh, if we now uh, define the function display name and surname as return this dot name concatenation white space concatenation this plus surname in this case uh, the re final result will be Mario Rossi, but if we, if we change this and we call, I don't know, uh, Alberto Angela, uh, the display name uh, will be Alberto Angela and non uh, Mario Rossi. As we were saying before, every JavaScript, uh, every uh, object in JavaScript is based on the on an object. This could be a little bit confusing. Um, we saw some uh, primitive elements like for example the string, the number and the boolean and we uh, we said that also this object uh, also these uh, types as an object representation and it can be defined using the object um, this kind of, this is an object, 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 and we can define it using the, a new one using the keyword new, and then we can access to its property, uh, or we can assign uh, a property using the dot notation and specifying a value. Um, in case you can also pass a parameter inside it and uh, uh, as I was saying before, there are some common methods uh, that we can use uh, 
uh, when we are dealing with objects, like for example, the two string method or the two value of, or the value of. Another important aspect of JavaScript is the possibility to use uh, functions that uh, works in a async and uh, fashion. Uh, this was introduced in uh, 2017 in the in the standard and enable uh, an asynchronous management. The keywords async allows you to declare a function as an asynchronous, and then you can uh, use the keyword away to suspend the execution of a function, waiting for the promise associated with an asynchronous activity. We can see here in an uh, in a example. Uh, the function here await uh, will not start. Um, usually, uh, then we will return on the on the example. Usually, uh, they are used uh, in the callback functions. Uh, there are functions that are that are passed as a parameter of other function and are used in promises, which are objects uh, whose state represent the state of execution of an asynchronous task. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, async and await works uh, uh, with promises and with callback function, and uh, it's uh, an asynchronous uh, fashion on doing the, the job. And we will see this uh, in, a, I prepared an example to explain you the async and await function, and we will see then in, uh, in Ajax. So, um, now we have this example, but I had another one that explained better the, how it works. Um, this is a uh, part concerning the DOM manipulation. I, I think that we, we can uh, continue with the DOM manipulation and then I, I will show you uh, the example uh, I was seeing before. So uh, another powerful uh, feature of JavaScript is the possibility uh, to, to work with uh, HTML elements, to select HTML elements, and also to edit and modify HTML elements. Uh, in this case, uh, I define, for example, a container. Uh, I assign an ID to this container, and this container has a title, an heading, and two paragraphs. And this is uh, the way that JavaScript allows me to select the container and uh, cycle uh, inside the elements of this container. Another important feature that JavaScript uh, uh, offers is to uh, be responsive to user uh, to events that tri are triggered by the user. For example, uh, uh, the most common uh, event is the mouse click, uh, but we can have also a key press set. For example, if uh, want to trigger uh, the something when the user is pressing the space bar, uh, or um, uh, on mouse over, on mouse leave are other uh, examples. That, uh, I, I add a list of all these examples that we will see. And this is the way uh, we can uh, add an event listener uh, to an element, and this way this element becomes responsive. So for example, if uh, in a button I can add an event listener that uh, reacts to a click calling a function that, for example, uh, uh, shows me uh, on the console a click on test. This is uh, a clear example on how it works, uh, the event inside the DOM. This was uh, the list of uh, events I was talking before. Uh, we can have interface events, like for example, load, download, the scroller resize. When we uh, change something in the page and we uh, surf on the page, uh, you can have mouse events, uh, so mouse over, mouse out, mouse down, uh, mouse move, and you can have also uh, keyboard events, key down, key press, and key up. Another important feature I wanted to stress uh, for, uh, um, for JavaScript is the possibility to uh, use Web Storage API. 
Um, I selected this um, compared to others, like for example, browser API, because uh, web storage API um, are useful, in my opinion, uh, when you are going to uh, code a, a website or a web page, uh, because allows you to use some extra space to store information. Um, you can use, for example, the local storage and the session storage. Uh, the local storage uh, allows you to permanent uh, store data, while the session storage just for uh, the duration of a session. Then when you close the window, uh, everything will expire. Uh, there were two approaches before. Um, to store data in a persistent way. Uh, the one was cookies and the other was um, for remote persistent uh, save data on the server. In this case, we can save data just on our browser and this is really comfortable. <coughs> this is um the these are the methods that we are going to use we have for example the remove the clear the set item and the get item get and set works to um, retrieve and assign a key clear removes all the keys while remove item remove a, cre a key from the storage and this is uh, an example we will see this example uh, uh, in live. And before starting Ajax, uh, I want to return on brackets and show you also this part on uh, DOM manipulation. Okay. So let's zoom a little bit and open the console. Okay, if we go now on application and on our local storage, uh, I had these two buttons. You see my my page? Okay. So uh, right now, if I write in P now on my local storage, uh, P Greg it's written. If I want to remove P, I just remove it. Other things I can do is. For example, I add this uh, style on uh, mouse over. So um, every uh, everything it's written uh, will be colored uh, in yellow. And after a few seconds, I set a timeout and the colors uh, will return uh, black. Let's see the script. Uh, this is just uh, the definition of the HTML. I use a little bit of bootstrap uh, here because buttons are cooler than, uh, than normal. Uh, and uh, part of script related to this, ah, I yet also to show you on the console what is happening. It's true. This is the part uh, related to the web API. Uh, really, 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 really easy to implement. Uh, local storage set item, local storage remove item, and I added just to event listener on click, and you call the function. Very, very, very easy to use. For objects, I prepare a different type of variable than the array we define uh, in the example uh, in the slides. And uh, another kind of uh, object uh, where I uh, I can show you now what's happen if I, for example, change here Alberto Angelo and I save in the console. Uh, I had Mario Rossi uh, line 35 and Alberto Angela line 36. In fact. On line 35, I bring just Mario Rossi. On uh, line 36, uh, I'm refer referring to the this, which is this object here, person, and I'm uh, accessing the name and the surname, so Alberto Angela. And I have something also with the manipulation. Now, this is uh, the mouse over that. Uh, allows me to color in uh, the um, 
part of HTML, and this is the set timeout function that's uh, put in black the everything it's written. So return on the uh, this is another thing I want to show you uh, that I add um, another kind of uh, event listener that is listening to every key I'm pressing. So right now everything uh, I I'm pressing it's uh, written in the console. Do you see? I also uh, represented uh, many kinds here, the, the name of all the variables, uh, and here the same kind of um, array and objects that we use the, during the examples. Now, return to the slides and starts uh, with Ajax. Uh, Ajax it's uh, really, really, really important in the um, in JavaScript and in general for the web. Um, Ajax has been the reason why JavaScript uh, began uh, so important uh, because um, before Ajax, uh, communication with server and works like uh, in a in a, a synchronous fashion not asynchronous, but synchronous. So um, when we ask a change on our web page, we have to wait till the server answers us, and then all the page uh, will be refreshed. This is not the case with Ajax. With Ajax, we can just uh, change a part of our page without reloading all the content. And this is very, 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 very uh, comfortable, very, very, very useful uh, in um, web programming in, and allows us to uh, do many things uh, without stopping and waiting for the answer of the server. Uh, AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Um, but uh, really it works uh, i think that uh, it's the 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 wider uh, use of uh, of ajax uh, is done with json i think that most of you knows json uh, it's a format for uh, string uh, for storing and transporting data um, and it's used as a um, as a format to exchange uh, data from a server and a web page. It stands for JavaScript object notation, so uh, something familiar. And it's really, really, really light. And um, it's uh, light and easy to understand uh, and also easy to, to learn. This is uh, an example of Ajax. Um, the Everything in Ajax uh, turns around uh, this this object, new XML HTTP request. This is uh, the fundamental fundamental part of um, of Ajax. And in these slides, uh, I want to show you uh, really the difference uh, between. Uh, uh, how it works uh, some years ago uh, in a synchronous uh, fashion and how it's uh, working right now with, uh, with uh, Ajax and with the asynchronous communication. Because right now, uh, if you need synchronous way of communicating, you're, you, you use it, but otherwise, I think that no one uh, still use uh, synchronous communication uh, in web page. And this is uh, meant to, to, to say that uh, no one is preferring uh, synchronous communication to a synchronous one if you don't need it to do. And the object we created in the example before, this object here, is the one that's uh, opened this layer of communication. 
And as we can see, this object uh, um, receives some uh, some parameter. For example, the ready state, and it uh, it's uh, reacting to this event on a ready state change. This is uh, an event that is called uh, five time uh, during uh, an XML HTTP request from when the request uh, um, is created. Uh, till when the request is uh, destroyed, is deleted. There are five uh, steps, and each of these steps is indicated by a number. So the fourth one is the last one. Uh, it means that the request is, con uh, is concluded, and we are going to check if the request status is 200, so all uh, OK. And we are going to um, put inside uh, the my div, uh, uh, inside the HTML of my div, the result of this response. Uh, another important uh, part of the Ajax call uh, is uh, there are these two methods, uh, the open and the send. So here we react to the event. To, when we do open, we create the request. In this case, we are creating a get request. This is the target of the request and through uh, we use true or false to um, true if we want to do asynchronously and false if we want to do synchronously. And then we send the request with the method HTTP rec.send. This is an example which is uh, more complex because uh, in the example before we didn't uh, manage the the status of our of the server response. Um, although um, it's uh, the server uh, doesn't answer us always with a 200, we can have also error. For example, uh, uh, server error with uh, 500, or the page does, page not found uh, for 04. So uh, in this case, uh, this is a, a Ajax example in which we uh, manage all the error states uh, with a simple switch case. And another um, feature that allows us to write um, Ajax in a simplest uh, way is to use the fetch API. This is an API that has been introduced uh, some years ago, and it has been introduced because working uh, using the XML HTTP request uh, and all these parameters is not so comfortable. While using uh, this uh, fetch API, it is. In fact, uh, we can express here the URL uh, of our request and put inside an object all the parameters that we need to, uh, in order to make this um, function work, make this uh, call to the server work. So we specify the method, in this case a post, uh, kinds of headers we are going to put, and also this is a post, so in, there is a, a content. Okay, some noise is back. I'm going to uh, solve it. I'm going to close uh, everything again. And just to finish on the slides, and we have also the the body, and then we manage uh, the um, we manage the response of the server using the promise. So let's close again. And We have seen as to compare to XML HTTP request, fetch is a simpler syntax, uh, and uh, it's also better integrated into the JavaScript object model, uh, as we have seen in the way we can uh, write the, the function.
So now we can do, uh, I closed it, but I need to show you another example. Uh, this example, this example is about uh, synchronous uh, versus asynchronous communication. And to show you an Ajax example, this is the Ajax example. I, I didn't write this, this example. Uh, this is just um, Ajax example to show you the power of Ajax. Very easy. This is uh, the button, as you can see, uh, doesn't change, but uh, the text inside the paragraph, yes. And this is uh, the powerful of asynchronous. Um, me seems really normal nowadays to have this uh, behavior of our web page, but this was not the case uh, maybe 15, 10, 15 years ago. Um, and this is really, really, really uh, useful for education. Another thing I want to show you is the different um, pra, uh, an example of difference between load and asynchronous asynchronously. Uh, let's open the network uh, tab of our browser and try to load the synchronously the thing. As you can see, each um, each item uh, is uh, loaded. Uh, one after the other we can do again for oh, this time i get voice but okay if you see here you see that uh they are uh just shifted uh one after the other when the first one uh, ends with the load uh, asynchronously, this happens uh, practically in the same time. So when we uh, start a request and we are waiting for the response, we start the other request, we start the other request, and we start the other request till the end. So let's try again, or uh, I just did so it's so, it's, but I think that you can see the difference. Do you see the difference? Is it all clear? Okay. So I close everything again. And now we can see uh, the last part uh, after JavaScript, uh, Ajax, and we uh, the, the last part is about jQuery. jQuery is a lightweight, uh, write less, do more JavaScript library. Uh, this definition uh, is taken from uh, um, the uh, Boot3C. Uh, the purpose of jQuery is to make it much easier to use JavaScript uh, on our website. And uh, what J jQuery does in practice is to um, take a lot of common tasks that requires many lines of code and uh, offers you a solution uh, in uh, very, very few lines of code. And this is simplify a lot uh, the things that we usually do with our uh, web page, like for example, the DOM manipulation, the Ajax, and uh, also the CSS. This is um, uh, the features that uh, jQuery offers to us. Uh, HTML and DOM manipulation, CSS manipulation, uh, HTML event methods, FX, uh, the possibility to use Ajax, concatenation of methods, and other utilities. Uh, I said uh, other utilities because uh, basically with jQuery you had uh, a plugin for almost any task. And why jQuery? 
because it's open source, uh, it has a really uh, wide community. Uh, it's cross browser and it's used by the biggest companies, uh, Google, Microsoft, uh, IBM, Netflix. Um, I think it's one of the um, most used uh, libraries, JavaScript libraries uh, in the world. This is how you can get uh, jQuery. Uh, you can import it. Um, oh, you can download it from the website and import it as a local file, or you can use um, the CDN technique. So you can import it from a link, uh, and you will use the the version, the jQuery version hosted by uh, usually Microsoft and Google offers. Um, a jQuery version. And uh, best, the best way is to put this code uh, in the body, at the end of the body, and not at the end, to prevent that uh, maybe uh, you can interact with something and this is not loaded during uh, all the uh, creation of the, of the DOM. So best practice uh, is to put the script part at the end of the of the body. We can choose between two versions, the product and the development one. The development one is minified uh, and the uh, production, no, the, uh, on the contrary, the production version is minified, the development is not. So uh, the development version can be used to code uh, when you are developing your web page and then in the product uh, in the final version of your prototype, you will use the production one. Um, so why jQuery is so famous? Uh, it's so famous because it's easy to use uh, and it's easy to use because it has a very, very e easy uh, syntax. Um, we need three elements to write something using jQuery. We need the dollar sign, we need a selector and we need an action. The action is the function to be performed. Uh, the selector uh, pick the elements that we need and the dollar um, it create uh, a jQuery instance, let's say, uh, allows us to access jQuery. And then what I can do is, for example, create an element here in just one line I created a container and I put a paragraph inside a container and this paragraph has uh, something highlighted inside, sorry for the Italian, uh, of the, the sentence. Uh, then I add a class to this, to, this, uh, to this container, this class is called Nuova Classe and then I append uh, this um, this container in the body and in, it inserted also into another element. And as you can see, uh, we did it in four lines and uh, writing very, very few lines of code. This is the way that we can uh, use uh, selectors in jQuery. Practical, another advantage of jQuery is the fact that selectors works like CSS selectors. So uh, it, it works uh, right in the same way. So for example, if you have a um, paragraph, a tag, you can call the tag uh, uh, just uh, writing it. If you have a class, you can use the dot notation. Uh, and if you have the, um, the ID, you can use the um, the sharp to to call it, and of course uh, there exist uh, other uh, um, CSS selectors. Uh, I don't know if you have seen them with Mattia in the previous lesson. Uh, you can you, for example, can select. Uh, uh, more than one element, you can select uh, all the child of an element, and all, um, all these aspects can be done with a uh, CSS selector, and the same selector more or less uh, works uh, with jQuery as well. 
An important uh, method that uh, jQuery offers to us is the possibility to react uh, when uh, the, the page is loaded. And this is done uh, using the document.ready function. Uh, this is to prevent that uh, any code uh, from running before the document is finished loading, uh, as I was saying before. <coughs> it's always good practice to wait for the document to be fully loaded. And this also um, allow, uh, allows us to have uh, JavaScript code before the body. Um, this uh, allows us to have also the JavaScript code uh, on the head because you wait that everything is loaded and then you apply um, the other rules. I put here two examples that can happen if you uh, make this mistake and you don't wait to the fully uh, loading of the page. For example, you want to hide an element that is not created or you want to get uh, the size of an image that is not loaded yet, for example. JQuery offers you the possibility of get and set uh, elements inside the DOM. So you can, for example, call a different uh, button, add a listener for the click, and, um, and then this is uh, something uh, related to a paragraph. Uh, you can uh, change the text, which is the text content. Uh, the HTML, which is the in content of the element, including uh, the HTML markup, and the val, uh, which is the value of form fields. So this, uh, the last one does not belong to every HTML tag. Another things that we have seen, you can add and remove uh, elements. Uh, these are for uh, add new HTML uh, elements, the append, the prepend, after and before. And for example, uh, you can also remove elements. Uh, you can use the remove and the empty. Empty, for example, remove the child elements from the selected element. Uh, append, usually insert the content at the end. If you use prepend, we want to insert the content at the beginning of our selected elements. One of the most popular and used function of jQuery frame of JavaScript framework uh, is the manipulation of CSS. And uh, usually the most used uh, um, function in this case is the CSS. Um, and like uh, dot at allows you to obtain uh, uh, the CSS of an element and then you can assign um, a property, a custom property, uh, as in the first example, uh, and for example, uh, uh, the background color uh, and the value. Uh, then for CSS, you can also add the class, remove class or toggle. Toggle uh, works that if you have it, uh, you remove it, but and if you don't have it, you add it. It's the toggle behavior. So if not selected, you select it, and uh, if it's selected, you uh, you you are going to uh, not select it. You have also uh, API for uh, uh, manage the dimension of an element and you can access uh, the width, the height and also inner width, inner height uh, and the other outer parameter. And uh, jQuery offers you also a um, kind of management of the event that works really uh, similar to the management of classic uh, events in uh, JavaScript. It allows you to use the bind keyword uh, instead of uh, add event listener. And as you can see, it's a um, strict form. Uh, it's a shorter form of writing uh, a command. Uh, add event listener, I think there are uh, 20 characters. Uh, bind is just four. 
so your code is uh, more readable uh, when you use jQuery. And another feature of jQuery is the possibility also to uh, use events uh, in a better way because it gives you the possibility to refer to some uh, event properties. For example, uh, uh, in this case, I, uh, I, I'm checking if the type of event is a click and I access this property of the event. I have another property, uh, which is the target. Uh, which is the target of my event. And we can use, uh, we can use, for example, uh, uh, the this uh, inside, uh, inside jQuery and it's normal JavaScript. Another very cool uh, um, things that uh, jQuery allows us to do is the animation. Uh, we, we have this uh, example, for example, fade out, fade in, fade to, uh, slide toggle, we have the show, uh, and we have also the, the hide. And uh, was one, two last thing uh, I want to show you are the, um, are this part uh, related to uh, jQuery and Ajax. In fact, uh, we uh, have seen before that Ajax, uh, it's really comfortable, uh, it's really, really useful for a um, architecture point of view, uh, because allows us to use asynchronous uh, functions, uh, asynchronous communication with the server, and uh, it's something that we need. But the way we have to write Java, uh, Ajax uh, could not be so easy and uh, immediate, but with jQuery, uh, with jQuery we can simplify uh, writing uh, Ajax code. We have three parameters to use uh, inside the, the code, the URL and uh, the success function and uh, the error. Uh, so we have a function uh, that it's triggered uh, when the, the the status of the response is success, and if we if we have error, um, we have a function that is launched in case. Of course, we have many many other parameters to be set. There are uh, really uh, tons of. Uh, other parameter. I delete the slide with the other parameters because uh, it was unreadable. Uh, there were more than 20 other parameters that can be added to the basic one, uh, and you can find them on the on the, docu the official documentation. And here I uh, wanted to highlight some other shortcuts that. Uh, jQuery plus Ajax offers to us uh, that are the post and get methods that are the most used method uh, in uh, in uh, web communication and allows uh, jQuery allows us um, a way to write them and to uh, write them with less lines of code. Uh, we have four parameters that can be set: uh, the URL, the date. Uh, callback and the type, and two other very useful uh, shortcuts are get JSON and get scripts that allows you to uh, get the um, get a JSON or get a script from a server. So uh, this is all for uh, for this lesson. Uh, before I uh, ask you if you have any question, I want to show you the last example of um, I prepared for you. Uh, this example uh, is uh, all related to jQuery. We will see. Okay, so I open a pop-up window. I just I want to. Okay, so this, for example, uh, it's a draggable element. Uh, 
and we can do it uh, using jQuery. Uh, we can change Pippo to Pluto, and we can also increase uh, using the append uh, the um, number of uh, P that I, I want to show. Then here I add some animation, um, sli the slide toggle, the fade out, this is fade in, this is fade to, then hide, show, and then what other I, ah, and I add this example here. It's uh, an example on CodePen that shows you how to use um, Ajax and jQuery to to have a get to do a get. And this is the result. As you can see, to, to do this uh, for the front end part, we need just three lines of HTML and 14 uh, lines of JavaScript. And using jQuery, we are able to uh, establish a communication with a server and to get, uh, in, this in this case, uh, JSON uh, uh, data from a specific page. So, um, concluding, we have seen uh, uh, JavaScript, uh, which is the fundamental programming language of um, of the web. We have seen some uh, feature of JavaScript uh, and some other aspects that we have to be careful with, uh, like for example the um, the weak typing, uh, or for example the fact that we can also uh, declare variable uh, without using, uh, we can write statement without using semicolon, and this is, this can bring to error. Uh, we have seen the, um, the scope, so the visibility of variables, um, how to communicate in a synchronous and an asynchronous way, and uh, in your case, I think that the asynchronous way will be the uh, the way you are going to communicate uh, in your project with your uh, with your backend. So useful to uh, it's. Uh, I hope that has been useful to see uh, the Ajax uh, and the asynchronous uh, communication protocol because uh, you you will use it. And an another thing that is very uh, useful and we have seen it is jQuery because allows us to uh, write um, better JavaScript code in few lines of code. And um, always for your project uh, and for your website, uh, jQuery would be very, very useful. Uh, I suggest you to visit jQuery homepage and to see all the um, plugins that is uh, offering. Uh, because, for example, there are lots of tools for the UI part, which is uh, which are already done. Um, so, this part of jQuery plus the part of Bootstrap uh, that we will see in the next lecture um, will help you to to do a good uh, good looking uh, website. And then uh, I want to uh, share with you uh, an idea that I had. Uh, it's just a, also a question uh, I, I will write in the in the chat. Uh, if we after the professor Zakaria part, uh, if you want to do a lesson uh, uh, of recap uh, with uh, Mattia and me. Uh, in order to put together all these parts that uh, we, we have seen uh, uh, with different professors, let's say with uh, Professor Zakaria, the backend part, and me and Mattia, the front end part. Uh, what is your idea about this? Um, it's 
right about front end plus back end. So thumbs up if you want this lesson, thumbs down if you don't want. And uh, another, I think that uh, me and Mattia, uh, during the, when we will uh, present you the, the project, the website, uh, we also uh, will do um, an hands on lecture and we will uh, give you more material and more information about this lecture. But the idea is to uh, is to let let you code with us. So we are going to uh, prepare some task, some exercise, and we are going to solve this exercise with you. And you can follow us. Uh, uh, also, examples are very useful, so maybe we can see more complex ones. Uh, of course, of course, uh, I just um, I put I just put these examples because I I did them yesterday, so I did them uh, on a rush and uh, they are easy. But I hope that gives you the idea uh, of how it's working the uh, everything. Um, for the exercise um, for this end zone part that we are going to do. Uh, I will prepare something uh, uh, that it's harder and of course I, I will give you the, the possibility to do the exercise yourself and then ask us uh, help in case you need. Uh, I think that could be a good solution. So, but this part is uh, it's only related, uh, the end zone part is only really related to the uh, front end and um, we are going to do this part during uh, the um, presentation of the project, while uh, at the end of Professor Zakaria part, we will do this recap lesson um, instead of a tutoring one, uh, and we will uh, put together all the pieces. Um, so hoping that we are going to answer you on question about the integration because past experiences um, taught us that uh, there, there, there are students that come to ask us things about front end, but in, uh, are things that Professor Zakaria should answer and uh, the other thing around. So things related to the front end, but ask it to Professor Zakaria. This year, uh, me and Mattia will be uh, the only uh, responsible for the tutoring part. So also backend and front end, and so we thought that doing doing this lesson was useful uh, both for uh, for us to understand uh, what you have learned about the backend part, and uh, and on the front end, of course. So. Mm, I, I think that uh, both the lesson uh, will be done because you are interested in. Yes, of course, for the recap lesson, uh, I will put all together and also I will put the backend part together. So we will see also how to um, how an uh, API is done, how the server communicate with a database and all this part. It would be a lesson like the, the one I did today. So with example brought by me. So maybe um, simple examples, simple examples that give you the idea on how it works. Uh, and I think that right now it's 10, so I can stop the recording of the lecture. And uh, now,